yes good morning so here we start with a poem an elementary school classroom in a slum so what is an elementary school an elementary school is up till class 5th where the basic or the foundational classes are done so in an elementary school children the students must be taught the basic they must be given the basic education and uh, in order to give them basic education the infrastructure should also be congenial okay you don't need a shakespeare in an elementary school you don't need uh, the model of uh, a skeleton in an elementary school right so in an elementary school in order to supplement the students understanding of the concepts you need certain things which enhance their learning as per that level so okay in this classroom you know stephen spender uh, first of all will try to show us like what kind of students are there in the class the pathetic condition of students they are physically they are miserable when the students are physically miserable you can make out like will they be able to get education will they be able to learn what is intended to be intended to make them learn far far from gusty waves these children's faces so the very beginning of the poem far far it's a repetition and the repetition to convey the difference between the two worlds the world of poor and the world of rich okay the big disparity between two classes the riches and the poor so the poem starts with the difference with the contrast between two worlds the world of the rich people and the world of the poor people so far far from the gusty waves the gusty waves are the strong waves the strong winds the strong waves which also symbolize change okay wherever there is there are waves it means there is change there is progress there is development okay gusty waves are symbolic of strong winds are symbolic of change development prosperity so far away from those world far away from the world of prosperity or development here we have the world of these children where the children have the faces like rootless weeds so the children's faces like rootless weeds so far away from a developed world where children have everything here in this slum we have the children whose faces are like rootless weeds so what is rootless weeds unwanted unhygienic and malnutrition so let's understand the words rootless and weeds rootless is something which has no background rootless is something which has no uh, you can say uh, belongingness so the children have roots parents are the roots of the children okay the society is a root of ch child the society or the country or the place where the children are born that place that home is their root so these children are rootless it means that these children are unwanted they came here they are here without any requirement they are unwanted why i say why poet says they are rootless because no one owns them no one says that you are ours that's why they are in the slum okay if the children are in the slum because no one says that you are ours no government no ngo no one says that you are ours that's why they are in the slum so they are rootless and second word is weeds these children are like the weeds what are weeds weeds are the unwanted plants which grow with the main plants when we grow some important saplings or plants then along with them some weeds grow up and each week whenever we go for you know 
uh, taking care of the garden, we take out the weeds and throw them. So these children are the weeds in the society. They are unwanted. So they are unwanted and they are not owned by anyone. That's why they are rootless. No one supports them. No one fends them. No one takes care of them. So the poet says that uh, in this world, which is divided into two worlds, one of rich and the other of poor, these children are the ones who belong to the other world, that is the world of poor. And these children's faces look like the ones which show that they are unwanted and, and without any background. In order to convey this line, the poet has used in this very one line, see the poetic devices. Number one, the poetic devices of repetition, far, far. And that far, far has been used to emphasize upon the differences between the two worlds, the world of rich and the poor. So these children's faces like rootless weeds. The faces have been compared to rootless weeds. So here is the simile like rootless weeds. Faces compared with rootless weeds. It's a simile. Like rootless weeds is a simile. S-I-M-I-L-E. Note down all of you. So like rootless weeds is a simile. And there is one more de poetic device in the same expression. If I don't take the word like, rootless weeds is an, is an oxymoron. O-X-Y-M-O-R-O-N. Oxymoron is a poetic device. This Oxymoron is a poetic device which is used to convey two opposite words used together. It is about using two opposite words to convey a to convey an idea. So what are the two opposite words? One is rootless and the other is weed. If something is rootless, it cannot be weed. If something is weed, it cannot be rootless. So aren't these two words opposite? But these two words convey the idea that these children are unwanted and without any belongingness or without any background. Rootless. No one says that they are ours. They are not owned by anyone. Weed, unwanted. They are unwanted, that's why they are in the slum. Those children who are wanted, they happen to be in very good, beautiful homes. They happen to be in the beautiful schools. They happen to be sitting in front of the expensive devices. But unwanted children only sit somewhere in the near the gutter, somewhere washing the dishes. So here the slum children are the ones who are unwanted and those who don't have any background. So rootless weeds are two opposite words to convey the idea that the slum children are unwanted and have no belongingness. Got it? So rootless weeds is an, which poetic device? Oxymoron. All of you please note it down. So in one line, there are three poetic devices. One is far, far, that is repetition. And second is like rootless weeds is a simile. And third, rootless weeds is, a, is an oxymoron. Okay, three poetic devices in one. So you have to take care when the poet is, uh, when the examiner is asking you like rootless weeds, then simile. Only rootless weeds, oxymoron. Okay, so the their hair, the hair torn around their pallor. Now the next line is, in the very first line, the poet says that these children are rootless weeds. Now the point is like, how does, why does the poet say that they are rootless weeds? What are weeds? They are the unwanted plants. And do the weeds grow up in a very symmetrical order? Are the weeds good to look at? Do they have a very balanced growth? No. So those qualities of weeds you can see even in the even in these slum children.
so the very first line the hair turn round their color whose hair the hair of these slum children okay the hair of these slum children what kind of hair do they have turn round their color color is a pale face why do they have pale face because they are anemic they are malnutrition they lack the all the nutrients which the children should have in their diet so the children have their uh, hair all strewn around their face because their faces are pale or anemic so the hair torn around their pattern the tall girl with her weighed down head the tall girl with her weighed down head so the one child was who had hair scattered all over his pale face why were hair scattered all over his face because number one the hair were not washed he might not have taken bath for days second the hair might be dirty okay not washed not clean then not combed the children even don't even they don't even have access to the basic amenity like even water do could can they have a comb even if they might have a comb do you think they might feel like combing their hair before coming to school when they are hungry so their hair are scattered around their pale face so this one small sentence talks a lot about their lifestyle no access to water no ex they can't even imagine combing their hair why can't they imagine because they haven't even got their stomach full they don't even have access to water then will they think about combing their hair so pale face the tall girl with her weighed down head now there is another girl in the class she is very tall to her age so why is she tall to her age because she might have been above age in the class okay so usually in good schools there happens to be under age children okay in the very developed in very good schools the parents well off families the children of well off families you know they come parents want their children to be admitted before age they are so so eager about getting their children admitted in the good schools but here the children are the girl has become over age above age and she is there in the elementary school so will a will a, a over age child be comfortable with small children so she is not that comfortable so there is a tall girl with her weighed down head so she has uh, she has her head bent down maybe because of embarrassment or maybe because of the responsibilities of life so this tall girl might have got many responsibilities at home then she might be coming up over here and embarrassment for being so overaged in that small in that class where the children are of small age are there so then third child the paper seeming boy with rat size the poet is actually looking at the class with all children first child was the one who had pale face and his hair were all scattered over his face second was a girl who seemed to be above age overaged and seemed to be embarrassed and then there is a child who is paper seeming boy with rat size what is paper seeming which looked like a paper means very thin then there is a very thin boy whose eyes look like rat so uh, eyes like that of a rat means if you people have seen a rat rats eyes are constantly in search of food rat is always hungry okay so there is a thin child who whose hunger is gleaming in eyes his hunger is, is visible in the eyes so there is a very thin child whose hunger gleams through his eyes so hungry child weak child will this hungry and weak child be able to study something in the class no so then the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones reciting a father's gnarled disease his lesson from his desk 
these three lines are there and they are about one child the stunted stunted means deformed the one who has stopped growing okay the stunted unlucky heir what is heir h e i r it is not heir it is heir a i r pronunciation like a i r heir but this heir is what does it mean the successor heir is the successor okay what do children usually inherit from their parents yes number 1 genes number 2 money property so many things but these children what they have inherited from their parents disease poverty so then there is another child one child was with with hair torn around his face another girl was with embarrassing head put down third child was a very thin boy you know whose eyes were gleaming with hunger then there is fourth child who is uh, uh, who has inherited disease from his father what kind of disease he has inherited the disease of twisted bones from his father see the line the stunted unlucky heir of twisted bones then there is a child who has stopped growing then there is a deformed child stunted means deformed d e f o r m e d then there is a deformed child he is unlucky because he has inherited disease of twisted bones from his parents reciting a father father's nod disease so he is speaking he is a spokesman of his father's bones or a disease of bones so he has inherited the disease of bones from his father and is sitting on his own desk and from there he is reciting the lesson properly so this child who has inherited the disease from his father the one who is uh, diseased the one who has got deformed and is not even growing and if he is reciting the lesson from his desk does that lesson serve any purpose is that education the end of it self no so these children step by step you are learning is there any one child so far who is who you think is actually learning in the class no okay let's see one more child at back of the dim class one unnoted sweet and young so apart from those children which we have talked about there is one more child who is sitting at the end of this dim class what a dim class the class where which is not well lit okay no proper light so there is a this class has no proper ventilation not even electrified okay no lights no sunlight coming so it's a dim class and in that dim class a child is sitting at the end of the class so at back of the dim class one unnoted so one child already it's a dim class then the child is sitting at the end in the back as a back bencher and there no one is noticing his presence he is being unnoticed why is he unnoticed because number one the class is dim and secondly he is sitting at the back of the class so there is one unnoted sweet and young but the poet describes him as a sweet and young boy the poet uh, likes him why does he describe this child as a sweet and young let's see his eyes live in a dream of squirrel's game in tree room other than this so this child is sweet and young because at least he is lost in a dream at least he is dreaming about something beautiful the other children are living in a horrible present and that horrible present doesn't ensure any bright future but there is a child who is at least lost in a dream and that dream is of squirrel's game so he is dreaming about a squirrel's game what kind of game in which in that game the squirrel is playing in the tree room 
in the tree th there happens to be an empty place where the squirrel goes inside and comes out so the game squirrel's game actually is symbolic of freedom fun game childhood if you talk about childhood which things come to your mind tell me when you imagine a child in your eyes a 10 or 11 year old child what comes to your mind do you get an image of a child sitting and studying seriously no do you imagine a child playing yes so a child without play is not a child and this child who is sitting at the end of the class is at least dreaming of a game this so at least he can dream of a game this these children you know the, those who live in the slum the poet portrays them as bounded children the poet you know captures them as a one who are living in the in the prison of slum because these children have never been able to come out of that slum nor is there any chance for them to come out and enjoy the world they cannot explore the world why can't they explore the world because they how can they come out of the slum when no one is taking them out of it so they have been they have been you know bound in that gutter from which they need somebody's help to drag them out of it so the poet says that at the, at, at the end of the classroom there is a child who is sweet and young because he is at least dreaming of a game of squirrel and the game of squirrel indicates freedom fun frolic and game so other than this what is other than this the poet is dreaming about everything else but not this class and this class has nothing this class has darkness this class has nothing to make the student become better so it's better the child is lost in his game of squirrel and it's better that he is thinking about something else than this class so first stanza is about the condition of children in this class and none of these children is fit enough to learn anything in this class why is why is it so because these children are all malnutrition unhealthy unhygienic they have not eaten up anything to their full they are not even tidy enough they are not even fresh enough to learn and at the at the top of everything they are sick they are embarrassed how will they learn anything the very first quality to make children learn is that their stomachs should be filled full they should feel fresh they should look smart then they should be bubbling with joy they should not have anything which they might want to do and are forced to sit in the class got it when the children had enough of the games when children had enough of the food when children had uh, all when they've got all freshened up then when they are made to sit in the class then only they can learn something and then also they need the things as per their taste as per their age and as per their level okay you cannot show a chart of a for apple to 12th class students and you cannot show the anatomy of a body to nursery kids okay the things must be shown to children as per their age level and understanding and now the second stanza you will see that these children what kind of classroom is there where they sit okay so children today will be the test of first stanza of an elementary school classroom in a slum right and uh, there will be reading skills that is a comprehension also okay on sour cream walls donations second stanza is about time is there 5 hmm. minutes ha ah. so on sour cream walls donations so then the poet is describing the classroom what kind of classrooms are there which are painted with sour cream 
color on sour cream walls what do, what do you mean by sour sour if you talk about its taste then sour is a sour is something which it doesn't taste well you know if we talk about color the color of the walls is sour cream cream is off white and if it it has gone sour it means it has got faded it looks distasteful faded if you white wash the walls of a class with cream color it would look bright but if you don't paint the walls of the class for years then that very cream color will become sour it will look bad to your eyes you won't like it fresh cream color is bright color but if you don't white wash the color of the walls for years then that very cream becomes sour faded dirty okay it doesn't remain cream then it becomes becomes pale it becomes dirty okay so the poet says on sour cream walls donations the walls of the classroom are are distastefully done distastefully what do you mean by distastefully like you don't you feel like vomiting when you look at the color of that wall they are so dirty but here uh, you don't write the word like this meaning is the color of the wall has got faded and on those faded walls the authorities have put up a list of the people who might have donated for this class so in your class if we put up a list of the donors what will you do with that do children have anything to do with the donors no children have nothing to do with anyone's name but yes in that very class there are, there is a list of the people who donated for the cause of this classroom so what did the people donate the people donated not the things which the children might require in the class but they donated what they thought will look in the good in the class shakespeare's head cloudless at dawn at dawn civilized dome riding all cities so first of all in the classroom what's there there is shakespeare's head so what is shakespeare's head like there is a bust of shakespeare okay this much okay there is a shakespeare's bust you may call it a statue there might have been a poster but i guess it might have been a shakespeare's bust that is a statue in the elementary class a shakespeare's bust is kept how does shakespeare look like shakespeare if you look at his picture you will see that he is bald he has no hair and who is shakespeare shakespeare is a literary genius he he wrote plays if you talk about shakespeare then you talk about one of the most distinguished literary person one of the most lit uh, genius literary person and shakespeare you people are now in 12th standard have you read any play of shakespeare you not read any any play of shakespeare full fledged you might have been told the stories in abridged forms what shakespeare wrote that is taught in post graduate and graduate classes but in the elementary school is shakespeare required children don't even know who shakespeare is what will they do with the bust of shakespeare in the class that is for them is something which is bald and looks like a sun got it so the classroom of shakespeare of this these children is is full of irrelevant things number one the children are miserable their conditions themselves are miserable then by chance if you want to make them become interested in studies by hook or by crook then what is kept there that is all the more dismal first of all there is the there they have kept a shakespeare's poster or a bust and that shakespeare's poster is totally irrelevant okay children we'll continue from here tomorrow it's okay time is over you might have to attend your next class
will continue tomorrow